In today's world, greed is everywhere. The thirst for more seems unstoppable and it's more noticeable than ever. From the unyielding pursuit of wealth to the cutthroat competitiveness in various sectors, materialism appears to be a driving force in modern society. But this isn't a new phenomenon. Throughout history, countless tales have warned us about the dangers of unchecked greed. However, there's one story that stands out, not just for its age-old origins, but for how accurately it depicts the dangers of greed. This is the story of King Midas, the King of Greed. In the beautiful city of Phrygia, in what is now Turkey, there was a king named Midas. He was renowned not only for his vast wealth, but also for his insatiable desire to amass even more. Midas lived in a grand palace, surrounded by luxury, but his heart yearned for even more treasure, treasure that was beyond even his own grasp. One day, a most unusual event took place. Dionysus, the god of wine, found himself missing his best friend, Salinas, who was known to possess prophetic abilities when under the influence of wine. It was during one of his intoxicated wanderings that local peasants found him unconscious in the king's rose garden. Recognizing the sage, they brought him before their ruler, King Midas. The king, being well versed in tales of gods and sages, recognized Salinas immediately and decided to extend to him the warmest hospitality his kingdom could offer. The palace halls echoed with music and laughter for days as they celebrated the unexpected guest's arrival. When Dionysus heard that his dear friend Salinas was safe and treated as a royal guest, he decided to visit the city of Phrygia to express his gratitude. When he saw with his own eyes that Selinas was being treated well, Dionysus offered to grant Midas a single wish, any desire that his heart held. Blinded by his own greed and without giving it a second thought, Midas wished that everything he touched would turn to pure gold. Dionysus, albeit reluctantly, granted his wish but warned him of the consequences of such unhinged greed. When Midas first received this wish, he was ecstatic. With just a touch, he transformed everyday objects into magnificent golden artifacts. He picked up the roses in his garden, turning them into gold. He went around this palace and turned every single statue of himself into gold, and he even turned the fountains into liquid gold. However, his decision would not be wise for so long. The weight of his wish began to dawn upon him when he felt hungry, he picked up a grape and bit into it, and cracked his teeth. Every bite of food turned to gold the moment he touched it, making it impossible to eat. Thirsty, he tried to drink water, but it too transformed before it could quench his thirst. The true horror of his situation became clear when his beloved daughter, seeing her father in distress, rushed to his aid. As she reached out to hug him, the moment Midas touched her, she solidified into a cold, golden statue. His heartbreak was immeasurable. The very wealth he had acquired now stood as a testament to his greed, having taken away what he held most dear. In his despair, Midas begged Dionysus to undo the curse. The god, moved by the king's genuine sorrow and understanding that he had learned his lesson, agreed to help. He instructed Midas to bathe in the river Pactolus, promising that its waters would wash away his golden touch. Midas followed Dionysus' advice, and as he bathed in the river, the water shimmered, turning the riverbed into golden sand. When he emerged, his curse was lifted. His daughter, too, was restored to her original form, bringing immense relief and joy to the king's heart. This ordeal transformed King Midas. No longer did he crave material wealth or wish to be surrounded by gold. He had realized the invaluable worth of the simple things in life, love, family and the joys of everyday existence. But this is the happy ending, which is just one of the thousands of retellings of the story. In one version, Midas got to live with his consequences, living out his days as a failed ruler and with no one around him. In another version, after relinquishing his golden touch, Midas becomes a devotee of Dionysus, renouncing his throne and wealth to live a humble life in nature. It's also important to remember that not only objects and people turn to gold, 
the curse even turned the flowers, trees, grass into gold. In this moment, he realizes that there's beauty in the natural world, and when he touches it, he makes it lifeless and frozen. The story of King Midas can be traced back to ancient Greek sources, and like many myths, it doesn't have a single author in the way modern books do. Instead, it evolved orally over time, passed down through generations before being recorded in written form. One of the earliest written sources that mention Midas is by the Greek historian Herodotus. However, Herodotus focused more on the historical King Midas of Phrygia and did not delve into the Golden Touch narrative. The Golden Touch myth, as we know it, found its way into literature through various ancient writers. Ovid, the renowned Roman poet, provides one of the most detailed versions in his work Metamorphosis, written in 8 AD. Ovid's narratives recount the tragic tale of Midas' wish and its disastrous consequences, closely resembling the version most are familiar with today. While Ovid's Metamorphosis provides one of the most detailed and influential written accounts of the Midas story, I think it's crucial to understand that the tale itself is a collaborative tapestry of folklore, molded and refined by countless storytellers across centuries. But the question that often surfaces is, was there a real King Midas behind the legend? From what I've gathered from my research, the story of Midas turning everything he touched into gold is rooted in Greek mythology. This tale, as told in various scripts and ancient texts, offer moral lessons rather than historical facts. Often, myths like these are symbolic narratives designed to convey deep truths and societal values rather than factual accounts of actual events. However, the name Midas does have historical relevance. Phrygia, the kingdom where Midas was said to have ruled, was an ancient Anatolian kingdom located in what is now modern-day Turkey. Historical records suggest that there were indeed rulers named Midas in Phrygia. For instance, an archaeological site in Gordion, Turkey, has been associated with King Midas due to inscriptions and the discovery of a burial mound, believed to be the Midas Mound. This suggests that a King Midas did exist, but whether he had any connection to the legendary Golden Touch is speculative. Whilst I've been reflecting on the story of King Midas lately, I think it's fascinating how tales from thousands of years ago can still be relevant today. Midas' gift, or rather his curse, is a testament to the consequences we face if we have unchecked desires. It's easy to get caught up in wanting more, especially in today's world where success is often equated with material wealth. But as Midas learned, there's a fine line between abundance and success. It made me wonder, how often do we truly pause and consider the consequences of our wishes? Is the grass greener on the other side? It's almost a bit ironic. In his pursuit of tangible wealth, Midas lost the things that were truly invaluable. Relationships, well-being, love. They're often sidelined in our modern narratives. But the Midas story forces us to reevaluate. What's the point of all the gold in the world if it costs you everything that truly matters? It's a sobering lesson, and I think it calls for introspection. In our personal and professional lives, is it worth taking a moment to understand what we're chasing, why we're chasing it, and at what cost? That's the beauty of these ancient myths. They don't just entertain, they challenge, provoke, and if we let them, guide. Be careful what you wish for, cause you might get it. Thanks for watching.